Hey everyone, it's Janie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing, and I am getting ready to prep for um, falling into autumn. This is Kimberbell's newest quilt, and of course I'm doing it at the last minute because I was away with the family, but um, let's go ahead and get started. I've done lots of prep videos, you've probably already seen them uh, before. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my fabric. This is my uh, instructor kit. I'm going to get out all my fabric, and we are going to prep the fabric by stabilizing it. And you stabilize it by pressing it with best press and ironing it. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And I'm going to um, move this stuff out of the way so I have just my wool pressing mat. And it is loud at the Mulligan household right now because it is lawn day. So um, you might be hearing that in the background. Here's my best press. Got an iron right here, which I'm going to go ahead and set to high. We'll put this out of the way. And I'm just going to go ahead and press all my fabric. So when I press my fabric, uh, I like to take my pieces and lay them face down. This doesn't have a right or a wrong, but this does. And I'm going to give everything a shot of spray. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to, um, after we press, we're going to cut. So I'll get a bunch of different rulers out. We'll get a whole bunch of different rulers out. And these look like fat eights. So why don't we do our fat eights first? We'll get a whole bunch of rulers out, including our um, uh, our stripology rulers, which makes everything so much easier. Let me clear all that stuff. Best press, and we'll just go ahead and lay these out and start pressing. I don't usually use steam with my iron. Some things you have to be careful of if, if you are using steam. For me, I like to... Um, you know what, we're doing a bunch of uh, landscaping and we're redoing our driveway. So I was just looking at my my wool mat because it's right next to the door, which goes to the driveway and it's covered in pieces of driveway. Isn't that nice? So give me a second, I'm just gonna, iron, I'm gonna vacuum that up. Back again. Okay, let's lay these out again. And I'm not gonna, make you watch the whole video although I know there's some people who tell me that they that they sew with me that they'll just like leave on the video and it's like we're just girls sewing together girls and guys sewing together just having a little sew date and it depends on the fabric you don't want to distort it you just want to press it until um, it's dry. And best press, what it's gonna do is it's a light starch. It is going to make your fabric so there's not as much movement when you cut it and when you sew it. And then I just drape this over a chair I have in the room or a sewing machine or anything else. Pieces you want to be careful of would be pieces like this that have like a stripe to it or some kind of geometric design. Because what you don't want to do is just take your iron and start moving it in all different directions. Because you want, um, see, I'm just going to go in the direction of my stripes. Once I have it kind of set, then I'll, I'll just iron however I wish. A lot of people press 
I'm too impatient to press. So I iron mindfully. once it's kind of set in one direction. This doesn't make a difference. This is just silky solid. And you want to use a um, misting bottle because you'll just get better coverage with your, uh, with your spray. You got to have a misting bottle in your sewing room. And it's better if you have like two or three because they do go bad and do you see right here I'm getting a little bit of flaking that's totally fine it'll just brush right off all right this is probably going to take me about half an hour so I am going to I'm going to go ahead and maybe I'll lay out two more pieces and then I'm going to turn off the video and let you press away. You can put on your favorite show. It's a good time to binge something good. Violet and I totally binge. Um, I think it's called 1828. And geez, was it tough living back then. That's non-directional. So I think this is Royal Ice. You know, it's one of the newer colors. There's always been a lot of coconut cream in the Kimberbell projects, but this one's like a uh, coconut cream is like it's almost like a little bit of a pinkish tinge to it, and Royal Cream is just or Royal Ice R O I C. That's just like a snowy white. Maybe it's royal icing. I'm not sure. All right. I'll see you back here in just a little bit. I had to turn my camera back on because look at these. Well, you know, they're sprayed. And even though you see it darker in some areas, it's a mist. So you have it. Like, it's everywhere. So don't worry about that. But look at these colors. Are these not so much fun? I'm super excited for this project. Okay, let me get back to pressing. Or you know what? Why don't you just stay with me? Because I'm just pressing, right? And you're just pressing. So we might as well just press together. I just laid these out and I was like, oh my God. They're so vibrant. Just press until it's dry. And then you're going to feel the, the fabric's more crisp and it has more body. It's not just completely limp. So I just spray them. I lay them out and spray them. And then I just move them around and I press each one, one, one at a time. These are my fat 16ths. So normally when I am pressing and ironing, I use my Aliso, but my Aliso died. I revived it for a little while, but then it just died again. Um, I ordered a new one because I got to have my Aliso. I love the feet. I love that it like pops up on its own. You know, this iron here is my Panasonic 360, and this is what I use 90% probably 95% of the time, but when I'm ironing large pieces or a lot of fabric, I like my Aliso. I find that it's, uh, this one doesn't bother me because it's so light and it's cordless. And I know this is some people's go-to iron, but I feel like my Aliso is a little bit bigger and um, you'll never have a corded iron that's going to be as hot consistently as, did I say corded? You'll never have a non-corded that's going to be as hot 
as a corded iron. It's kind of like you'll never have a lawnmower that's battery powered that's going to be as good as a lawnmower that you plug in. But for those quick jobs and those easy jobs and the ironing that I mostly do, my Panasonic 360 does the job. I, I just love, look at this iron. Isn't it just fantastic? Okay, dogs are with me today and uh, they're asking to go out. So just give me a second. I'll be right back. Here are my fat quarters. Maybe I'll just lay them out, out like this. Whatever doesn't. It can just soak through to the one below, right? It's kind of nice. Get some bang for my buck. I would call this non-directional. I mean, it's got lots of little lines going all different directions, but they're they're uh, so compact, like you won't notice it. think is that just feel that one's nice and crisp it is feels good all right I'm actually gonna do these separately and spread them out this way Ooh, you gotta watch your stripes. Those are the ones you really gotta be careful of. Or plaid or something like that. Okay. You go through a lot of best press. Right. Just take your time, get into your zone, daydream. I think I was actually daydreaming just now and talking to myself, just very lightly under my breath. It's what I do sometimes.
So we were gone for, I think I was gone for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I was gone for four days. And we had a dog sitter. And the poor dog sitter was so sick. She had to, like, take antibiotics. And um, so I think the dogs didn't get out to do a lot because she wasn't feeling well. Well, Poppy will create her own fun these days. And her own fun means shoeing up my shoes. So I think I've been losing like a pair of shoes a week. And um, today, sometime today, I'm going to go and get some plastic crates because um, I think I need to put my shoes all in a plastic crate with a lid because right now I do have them in baskets. Um, she seems to really like mine. I don't think she really likes uh, <laughs> sneakers. I think it's really funny that I'm from the East Coast and we call them sneakers. Like, were they made so you could sneak around with your sneakers on? Here on the West Coast, they call them tennis shoes. I don't even know. Do they call them something else? Are there other names for those? But, yeah, we call them sneakers back East. So, I don't know, maybe the sneakers are too tough. She seems to really like the heels, like the the heel part of the shoe. That's what she's, she's so, um, she got my Toms. That's what she just got. And I really liked them too. They were fuzzy ones. And I just wonder, is she going to be a forever shoe destroyer? Is she going to outgrow it? She's almost, um, this is directional. So make sure you go in the direction, I'm, I'm going to call them arrows. Go in the direction of your arrows first, just to set it. So, uh, um, Momo, did Momo ever, <laughs> you know how you realize how good one dog is when you get a bad one? <laughs> She's so naughty. Momo never destroyed a pair of shoes. We have, um, I definitely have sheets that he's destroyed. and But he hasn't done anything like that since he was a puppy. But we never got rid of the sheets. So we have like pillowcases and sheets that have like little pin dot holes in them. Some holes are bigger and we just keep using them. But I left a note, I left a note for, uh, the dog sitter. I said, if she gets bored, she will destroy some shoes. And I think the dog sitter, um, you know, was taking a nap and she, the puppy got out of the room and, uh, and she created her own fun. I always tell myself a bored dog is a naughty dog, and that's why we try to walk them so much. Get them all tuckered out. It's hard caring for somebody or something else when you need to be cared for.
Here we go. We are almost through our fabric. All right, I'm going to pause the video again and I'm just going to keep pressing. Okay, we are all pressed and ready to go. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to cut our pieces. So if you look at your guide, you are going to have some instructions here on how to cut everything. Um, I'm telling you, stripology is the way to go when you have all of these little pieces, especially. And I love my stripology for the other pieces because I can square one side off and the other side off without having to take my fabric and flip it or my ruler and flip it. So um, I'm just going to grab my pieces and we are going to start cutting. So let's get started. I'm just going to grab my pieces as I press them. So right here, these are going to be, and I have stripologies in all different sizes. So I do have the little one and you kind of want to use the one that's going to be the most appropriate. You don't want like the biggest one when you're cutting small pieces. And these are going to be two and a halfs and then you have two and a half by three. So we can just go two and a halfs. Sometimes you don't get the full five. Like when we cut our kits at the store, I always make sure we cut them um, five and a quarter instead Let's go. Let's see where I have my best two and a half. Looks like it's going to be this. Mine's uh, a little bit off kilter. So hopefully it's not going to make the biggest difference. There's my five inches. I'm just going to go two and a half right here. Make sure you seat it in there carefully. And this one's going to be two and a half by two and a half. This is a new rotary cutter that I got. Um, I had a customer mention it to me. And I was like, okay, let's get it. Let's try it. Two and a half by three. So we're going to go three inches. I think this side is more square. And I'm hoping these don't have to be perfect. I'm just going to cut this off. How about that? Then I can square it off because I don't need it all. And then three. You just want to make sure you're really seated in there before you do your cut. And that way you can, you know, square off one side. Nice to have a little trash can near you that you can throw all your scraps away in. And this is for later. So I have a pile that I'll use for later. Okay, this piece right here, we just want two and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to do my two and a half this way. I'm going to square off this edge. I'm going to clean it up. And this I can save for later. And this I'm going to square up to four and a half. I'm going to clean off this side. And the thing that makes the stripology so great, one of the other things, is uh, you don't have to continuously pick up your ruler and reposition it. So I feel like your cuts are going to be more accurate. Here's my big old piece. Okay, so this one's bigger and we want three inches by two inches and we want a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and square this up so that it's nice and even because you can see this side isn't. And why don't we go ahead and cut some two inches. We'll cut two of those or the three inch pieces. I'm going to use my bigger stripology. I lay this down and make sure this is on the fold. I'm going to cut from this end because I can see that part so I can screw it off a little bit better. Oh my goodness. We just went to the Grateful Dead shows and Patrick is throwing out some Grateful Dead uh, music quotes right now to whoever he's talking on the phone to. You. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's just making me laugh. Okay. Clean off that side and we want these to be three inches. So I'm going to go one, two, three. 
And so that's one, two, three, one, two, three. Look at your directions twice. Make sure you're cutting these right. Save this for later. These strips right here. Here's that cleaned off piece. I'm going to open them up, layer them, and then we're going to cut them. Okay. And you've got the big daddy stripology. Let's lay this down. I'm going to clean off that edge over here first. Use these lines. Pop that up a little bit. Okay. And we need, we're doing uh, one, two, I'm just counting these up to see how many cuts I'm doing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Okay. And twos, um, I'm just going to go two, four, six, eight, you know. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, fourteen, and sixteen. And I need one more cut that's gonna be a three inch cut. So, um, sixteen, and I'm gonna go nineteen. And I only need one of those, but we'll just throw the other one in the other pile. So, here we go two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, and that's garbage. And I needed one of these three by threes. I'm gonna put in this pile, and the other one goes in my extra pile. And then I need to cut a three and a half by six and a half and a two and a half by four and a half. So this is a good time. I can just use this and a square ruler. Two and a half by six and a half and two and a half or three and a half by six and a half. Where should we cut from? Looks like this bottom part is good. Three and a half by six and a half. I'll just take this piece or you know what? Let's go this direction. We can use that edge up. And the rotating mat's nice because you can hold everything down. Did I do that right? Yep. And the last piece is going to be two and a half by four and a half. And I think we could fit it here. Two and a half by four and a half. I'll just square that up. And this piece is done and I'll keep this back piece. I'll use this for um I'll use this for when I do do the back of my quilt. I always use the leftovers. Okay, this one looks like it has a bunch of three by threes and then two by threes. Three by threes. So I'm gonna cut some three by three rows. And then we have to just be mindful of if we're doing twos or threes. Grab this. Let's see which side is overhanging. And we need three inches. Maybe we'll square off this side over here. I'm going to clean it up. So I'm not off of my mat. 
Okay, we're gonna clean up this side. And then let's go, I'm gonna do two three inch strips. Three inches and here's six. Put that to the side for right now. And let's see how many three by threes I need. I need one, two, three, four, and an extra. So I'm going to cut because I can always keep that. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do five of those. One, two, three, four. five and then um then we need three by twos so one two i'm just cut those right now wait one two three four five and then let's go 17 19 and i don't think we would have quite enough so this is one, two, three, four, five. We're going to have one extra of these. I'll pull it out. And then we have two, four. This is just scrap. So we have um, one, two, three. So let's go ahead and do another, uh, let's do another three inch. Because we need the three by twos. I mean, just grab a regular ruler, too. Here's my three inch because this side's all cleaned off. And you know what? There's so many different ways to cut. So don't feel locked in to any one way. You could just cut whichever way is easiest for you. Right? We want it just to be easy. I'm going to double this over. I'll clean off this edge over here. Clean it up. And then two, four, six, Eight, ten. See how many that was. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, fourteen. And we need two, four, six, eight, uh, two, four, six. So we have, um, I need one more set of the, um, one more set of those, of the two by fours. And I could take this one, this one here. There's my little square ruler. So six by two. I'm gonna do six, six by two. Go six by two. And I also need a uh, two and a half by two and a half. So we'll just do this first. And then we'll cut it down. Three. Okay, there are my 16 of these. 
I'm going to take the three by three that I had left over and I'm going to cut it down to two and a half by two and a half. Might as well use this up. And the last thing I need is I need a three and a half by four and a one and a half by one and a half. So I think we could th put our three and a half. Nope. Three and a half by four. We'll go this way. We'll go four, three and a half. This cut, I've got to admit, this cutter is really nice. So that was three and a half by four. And then we need a one and a half by one and a half. It's my itty bitty. Sometimes with this little stuff, I just cut it all the way off. Because what am I going to do with that awkward little piece? So there's my one and one half. And we are done with this. So I am just going to continue cutting on and um, you're just going to go through your cutting sheet right here. I do not cut the embellishments and we will cut batting as well. And I'll see you back here in a little bit. All right. That actually took me quite a while, but I went ahead, cut all my pieces, had a couple of miscuts, was really happy that I had extra fabric. I got um, F21 confused with F23, but it all worked out. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the pieces that are going to be my background pieces because I'm going to back those with Shape Flex. And before I forget, why don't we move this because... Every once in a while when I'm really tired, I'll just start ironing on my cutting mat. So, um, I like to take a highlighter and go through and mark everything. So, if you look at your instructions, and sometimes there are going to be pieces that you're not going to be putting um, backing on. But for the most part, I just go through here and see it says crunchy leaves background. I'm going to highlight that, but you, you know, we're going to, we're going to look at it one more time and just make sure that that's right. Door, label, windows. Here we go. Warm snuggles. And it's usually going to be the larger pieces. Um, background songbird. Fall sports. Right here, good books and warm drinks. Hay rides. Oh, who doesn't love a hay ride in the fall? Golden hour. House. Here's a bunch of our backgrounds right here. That's the piece I had to recut. And then Velveteen Pumpkin Patch. How cute is that going to be? And then all of these. Okay, so let's pull all of these pieces right now. Because we're going to be putting Shape Flex on them, there's also going to be other pieces we're going to put Shape Flex on. And that we're going to be flipping through the book to find those. But these are the three six and a half by eight and a halfs right here. So I'm going to grab these. And we need the striped fabric. Where are you striped? Actually, that might have been, because it's binding, that might have been something I didn't cut. Because um, it's right here. We have two pieces. We should have a fat quarter of it. And then the binding piece, which I didn't cut. I will be right back because I'm going to cut this. Okay. Found them. Okay, so here's the um, eight and a half by ten and a half. And then this one is the eight and a half by fourteen and a half. And that was directional, so you needed to make sure that you cut it in the right direction. 
I mean, is it going to really make a difference in the end? Uh, you know, your horizontal stripes would be vertical and your vertical would be horizontal. Um, now we need these pieces right here. Grab these. So we have a 14 and a half by eight and a half, a 10 and a half by eight and a half, and a 10 and a half by six and a half. And these are those background pieces. So we have everything on this page. Let's go ahead and turn it back to the other page. We need these pieces here. So I need an eight and a half by six and a half and a six and a half by six and a half. That's these two. Our hay rides, that's going to be that kind of toasty brown. And that looks like an eight and a half by eight and a half. Here we go. Bring that over here. That is done. We need a huge piece of coconut cream, 10 and a half by eight and a half. Looks like this one. 10 and a half by eight and a half. And then we have the blue. I call this blue with arrows. That's what I call it. Eight and a half by ten and a half. The honey, I call this one honeycomb. You know, I just make things up in my head. And then this piece here, which should be ten and a half by six and a half. That should be all the background pieces, but that's not all we're going to shape flex. So now if we go through the book, then we're going to have to sort. If you go through the book, it's going to tell you, and I like to mark this too so I don't miss it, um, iron fusible to the wrong side of the background fabric only. So this one, background fabric only, that's that striped brown and white. For this one, we have iron fusible to wrong side of the background and sweater fabric. So this sweater fabric is going to be the plum and the lilac. And one piece is six and a half by five and the other one is six by five and a half. And we have... We don't have them. What's this one? This looks like a background piece, doesn't it? That's big. Did I miss it because I was sleepy? This right here is here. Did I cut those? Let me let me check. There's the, hmm. oh, you know what? That is going to be the, um, I bet that's going to be sweater one and sweater two. So that's going to be in the embellishment kit. I thought, really? Did I miss both of those? And that's going to keep it from being all stretchy. And so I am going to stabilize that since we have to, you know, I usually, I don't cut my embellishments down, but this, we're going to go ahead and stabilize both of these sweater pieces. And you want to make sure you do that or else they can be difficult to work with. So there are those two pieces. I thought, am I losing my mind? That's usually what happens. Um, okay, and let's go here. This is the piece star, and it says iron fusible to the wrong side of piece A1. That's going to be that center piece right there. A1 is three by three. Too big. Oh no, A1. Wrong side of the A1. A1 is the three by three. And where are all of those? That was Oh, I don't even see that. Maybe I'm looking at a different fabric. It looks like this striped fabric. A1 B1 and center fabrics. See page 60. And the center pep fabrics.
A1. A1, B1, and let's just confirm A1. A1. Peace star. And then you can always look back here. Where is my peace star? Here's peace star. So that is actually my mustard fabric. I thought it was the striped one. So that's going to be this. Here's my A1. My B1 is going to be, let's look and see what B1 is. Peace star. It's going to be the, whoop. B1, sorry for the dark, barking dog, is going to be coconut cream. And here's your peace. Oh, you know what? It's peace, peace star. And peace star is... Peace star. Peace star. That's the R O I C, which is going to be like the lighter of the two. Like if you look at coconut cream next to R O I C, and it's going to be really easy to get these pieces mixed up. So you need to be really careful. Do you see how this one is going to be? I don't know. It's like almost more flesh tone. So I'm gonna grab this one because we need a three by three. Is this three by three? It's always nice to have a ruler around too so you can remeasure. So that is three by three, but guess what? This is not. So I need my mustard again and I need a three by three. Here we go. So this is what we're looking for. These are gonna get stabilized. And we will be sorting all of this. So that's A1, B1, Let's put those in the pile and center fabric. Center fabric is two and a half by two and a half. And it looks like that's going to be, you need two of those. So two and a half by two and a half. And sorry, there is a dog in here. Two and a half by two and a half. Okay, continue on. Next, should we highlight that so we know? Fusible. Next, Peace Star. That was the Peace Star. Autumn is my favorite. Wrong side of all fabrics. To the wrong side of all fabrics. So we already grabbed our background fabric. Now we need, um, these are the ones that we need for our uh, applique so we need the blue and we're looking for the pieces that are two and a half inches by two and a half inches and this looks pretty much like two and a half by two and a half let's lay it down right here two and a half by two and a half so we need a blue a green the purple blue here's the green here is the light purple we need the light one and we need um I don't know if that's going to be the mustard. This is where you're going to have to flip around just to check. And that is called Autumn is My Favorite. So we need this, this one here. This one is the, okay, so this is not the Muse. This is, this is actually the dark, dark one. That's the newer color. So this dark, dark one is the Muse. We need a two and a half by two and a half, which is right here. And then we need the purple. Let's see if we can find that in this pile. And you know what's going to happen? I'm going to end up finding it later. Let's do this. We are going to get organized here. Let's put all our colors all together so we're not digging through a pile of mess, which is what I have here right now. All right, I'm going to turn off the video so I can just organize. I will be right back. Okay, I resorted and got reorganized so that it would be easier for me to find my pieces. Here is my two and a half by two and a half. This is for that autumn is my favorite color. And 
And uh, what am I missing? Let's look. I am missing, autumn is my favorite color. Oh my God, those books are gonna be so cute. Uh, we are missing the orange. I think we should have like a bright orange. This one right here, autumn is my favorite color and it's gonna be this. And you're just gonna grab a two and a half by two and a half. And these all need shape flex on the back and fusible to the wrong size of all fabrics uh, and the background fabric is already over there. So that should be perfect. Let's go to the next one. The books, good books. Fusible, wrong side of all fabrics. Here we go. So we should have the background fabric already pulled and we're just gonna look at good books. And I'm just gonna go through here to find my good books and I'll grab the fabric. Good books. So this one right here, three and a half by one and a half. That looks like too wide. That looks like two inches. Three and a half by one and a half. That's right. So this one, um, good books. We need a two by three and a one and a half by three and a half. Here's my one and a half by three and a half of that. And I need a two by three. This looks like a two by three. You know what I need is my little square ruler is what I want right now. This one. And this is two by three. Yes. That's good book, good book. One and a half by three and a half. This one here. The bright orange one and a half by three and a half. And oh, that's already pulled. That's my background. And we need this one, two by three and a half. That looks right. And that's it. Okay, so that's the background of all of these. Let's flip back to this page. Forest green embroidery leather, and then you have some more embroidery leather, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And let's keep going. There's my good books. Here is Golden Hour House. All fabrics. So we already have the background fold, pulled. We need roof, house, window, door. Golden Hour. Golden Hour. Here we go. R O I C. Golden hour door, two by two and a half. This looks like two by two and a half. Let's measure it. There's two, and that's three. Too long. Oh, here's one. This is a little shorter. There we go. Two by two and a half. Okay, this is the door golden hour and then we need the windows three by two one of those three by two and that that's it we need a piece that is four by three and a half that is going to be the darker one of these this might be it let's measure there is three and a half and there is four Got it. The roof, four by two and a half. This, four inches. Oop. I have four and a half. Oh, four and a half by two and a half. That's right. And, and that should be it. Okay, here we go. Put those all together. That one is done. Golden Hour Choke, Choke Cherry House. All fabrics. So let's look at Choke Cherry House. Here we go, R-O-I-C, two by three. Two inches by three inches. That is right. We need this one here, which is two by two. 
Here's our cutie little two by two. We need this right here, choke cherry, two and a half by two and a half. And this is, um, what is this color right here? That is, we had a big piece of that. That quarter, is that the red? Let's look before we grab it, but I think that's going to be the red, this one right here. And it looks like we need a three and a half by six and a half which is this one. Here, I got these put away over here. Choke cherry, and I think that's it. Yep, should be four. One, two, three, four. Got it all. I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna pause the video, and I'm gonna grab all the fabrics that need to be fused with Shapeflex. Okay, I just finished. These are all the pieces right here that we're going to put Shapeflex on. The rest of them, I'm just going to kind of leave here. I have a, um, actually we do have to move it because I need all of this area. So let me go ahead and just restock these. And we are going to get out my roll of Shapeflex. So I say buy it by the bolt. If you're going to be doing Kimberbell or even if you're doing other projects, like if you want to do a t-shirt quilt, if you want to do a tiling scene, you use that Shape Flex for all of those. So why not just have a bolt? Um, what I use, and you can buy uh, Kimberbell fusible, um, uh, fusible woven. That's they call It's the same thing. So if you wanted to get fusible woven, you could do that. Move this out of the way. For a lot of these little itty bitties, I have a bag of Shape Flex. Let me grab it. So I guess when I reorganized, I took it out of the bag and I put it in a little bas basket. But these are going to be great for all those little pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and take these and do my little pieces first because look at this. This is fantastic and it's stuff I didn't get rid of because I was like, oh, I'll be able to use that down the road. So um, we can grab all these little itty bitties and just put them on here. Go ahead and heat up your iron. I am going to be using steam for this. So I just put on the steam part of my machine. Okay, this couldn't be more perfect. So when you're putting down your light pieces, though, make sure there's nothing on the shape flex and you want the bumpy side to be facing up because you just don't want it to be shadowing. And I like to leave about, I don't know, 16th of an inch in between my pieces. 16th of an inch is going to allow me to cut in between with like my rotary cutter or whatever I want, a scissors if I want to do scissors. And if there's a little bit of the... um. Shape flex poking out, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, if you have a little piece, those are all. Let me grab. Maybe I'll take this one out. And I'll put this one down. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to press that one down. Again, we are going to have to resort once we do this because I'm just like, I'm just going to be laying this stuff down. And these are your applique pieces. So if it doesn't go from edge to edge, that is going to be okay too. Here we go. I also have a pressing cloth um, or my Teflon pressing sheet. So I can use that as well when I'm pressing this. So nothing sticks. Let me grab that if I can find it. And anytime I can't find it, because, you know, I misplace stuff, I just use, um, when I can't find stuff, I'll use just a piece of muslin. You don't want to have more than like an eighth of an inch peeking out because it'll stick to your iron base and gunk it up. And you want to make sure you give it a lot, enough time that it's going to stick. Okay, these should be good. 
This is good. And then we're going to cut them all apart later. Instead of cutting all of your shape flex out to fit this, I mean, I guess that could save you some time in some other ways. These bigger pieces, I'm going to keep these because I can use those for the background. And then the little pieces, that's what I'm going to use up right now. See, I knew there was a reason I was keeping all of this. I'm just kidding. I do not mean to encourage you to hoard, but like why throw all these away when you're going to be able to use them eventually? I think this is an app. I think this is a, a an applique piece. That's why I'm not worried about that very edge because you know how generous Kimberbell is with the applique pieces. You know there's going to be a lot left over. So there we go. And make sure when you're pressing, you don't have your cutting mat underneath uh, underneath your wool mat, especially if you're using steam, right? Like the steam is going, how do I know? You want to know how I know? <laughs> Those are one of the things that you just do sometimes. And then you're like, oh, that was a really bad idea. What's this? How about we lay down some of these itty bitties? Like that can go down. This can go down. This can go down. And this can go down. Then we can get out. I mean, we can get out my... Um, I have that bolt of shape flex and a lot of times I will lay down fabric on the bolt. We're going to use the bolt and lay it down. There's all my little itty bitties. That's a little too small. And some of you don't want to be bothered with this, but honestly, I was just raised in a house. Or like, we just didn't waste anything. And um, that can create clutter, so it's not always the best thing. Like, hopefully you'll be okay with getting rid of some stuff. I really force myself. It's like I challenge myself to do it. Like, you can do it, Jeannie. You can get rid of that tiny little piece of fabric. Oh, look at that. <gasps> Guess what? Upside down. That might happen once in a while. Don't worry about it. Be kind to yourself. Okay. Is this stabilized? Nope. Do you have a little skinny, skinny piece? We'll just get these out and just look at our pieces and see what makes sense. And how about this? That looks good. Just iron it on one side. And this, that looks good too. And we'll trim these down. I'm gonna be careful because that's a lot, uh, there's a big, big exposed edge over there, so I'm not gonna iron all the way over there. Let's grab this. Sometimes when we're making kits, we have like big pieces left over and I just save them. So we have another thing at the store that's filled with uh, shape, flex, shape Flex pieces. They are just, my dogs love barking. I don't know about you. But they just think it's so much fun. And I'm sure it is for them. Okay, here we go. All right, that looks nice. We're 
we're going to be careful down here because there's a lot that's exposed. For a second, I thought I put it upside down again, but I didn't. I did not. I might save that for something else. Let's do these. And again, make sure these don't have anything dark on the back side. Is not quite wide enough. Oh, look at this. This is perfect. That is perfect. Okay, I am going to turn off the camera. I'll turn it back on when we start doing the larger pieces off the bowl. See you in a bit. Okay, I think I did a pretty good job using up a bunch of my scraps. So now I'm going to go ahead and for my larger pieces, I'm just going to roll out my Shape Flex. This is Shape Flex Pellon 101, and I actually usually go this direction. And now it's going to be kind of like Tetris. You're just going to lay down your pieces and make them fit the best you can and remember you don't have to fill like go edge to edge like oh, I'm gonna push this up half an inch and I'll push this up because when you trim down your background pieces you've got about an inch that goes all the way around again check your fabric make sure there's nothing I don't know how it works because I don't use a lot of red but there's always a red thread that gets sandwiched in between I'm like how does that happen I'm not even using red. I'm going to go up a little bit here and up here, and that way I'm hanging off like half an inch on both sides. And I'll just be mindful of that when I lay this background piece down. Let's put this here. This. Wait a minute. I think these are just the other pieces. These don't need shape flex on them. Sorry, for a second, I had all these extra pieces and I was like, hang on, how did that even happen? Piece like this. And see this piece right here? I'll use it. That piece will get used up when I do my next project, which will be, it's probably going to be the Nativity. Um, was that even a background piece? Let me check my book really quickly. Background piece, or was it just laying on the top? That doesn't even look like a background piece. Oh, songbird background. It is. It is, it is, it is. And my dogs are here. Got to make sure they're not stealing anything. Not my perfect Momo. But you know Poppy. Um, I'm going to grab this from the rest, the other bin, because I definitely have pieces. Okay, let's go ahead and press these. And I don't do a great job pressing them right here. When I cut them apart, the large background pieces, I'll give them one more press from the other side. Especially if I'm like near these edges. And I rarely use steam, but I use steam when I when I do this. So this is a big project to prep. There are a lot of pieces. I felt like also oh, delightful wasn't as much because um, that was a really simple quilt. I think this one's going to be a little more involved, which is kind of nice, right? For those that are you the, of you that are new to Kimberbell or new to embroidery, oh so delightful was a little bit. I thought I liked it because it was um, it was just easy. All right. 
let's cut these apart and then I will find something to lay those last couple of pieces down on or that last piece just one piece I'm going to put this under here grab this and just cut in between those lines it's easier with a ruler but I kind of free hand I like free cut too like right here it's a little awkward angle for me okay I do it all there is like no one way to do this right but I find it much easier not to cut the shape flex to all of those different shapes but to just lay it down and use these pieces as your template We're going to have to do batting next. So batting and, um, and then sort, which to be honest with you, I am running behind. So I don't even know if I'm going to have time to sort. I may just sort a couple of the, I'll sort a couple of the blocks that we're just going to be doing today and then I'll finish sorting later. Okay, now that we have this, um, wait, I need one more piece for this. Now that we're done with this, I am going to give everything one more press. Here's this nice, gorgeous piece here. And sometimes, oh, look at this. I didn't even see that in there. Sometimes, um, what was I going to say? I don't remember. Does my brain have holes in it? Because the thoughts just go in and out as though they just leak right out. And I didn't spend a ton of time pressing that because again, once this is all off, I'll turn them to the wrong, wrong side. Stuff like this, trash. Stuff like this, keep. We're gonna move this out of the way. We're gonna give this stuff another press from the back side. There is no spreadsheet yet. I did kind of go on vacation. Sometimes, well, you know um, where we went, there was the reception was really, really poor. And there are times when we go on vacation where I take a day or two to just refuel, just veg out. And then I feel horrible about myself. I go, why are you so lazy? But I just need to get over it. I just wanna be productive all the time. I know some of you, some of you are so productive all the time, but I feel like innately I'm lazy. I just love not doing anything sometimes. And that's why I can't wait to someday retire so I have the choice and I can be lazy and then productive and lazy and productive. Patrick's pretty productive all the time. It's really rare for him to kind of sit around. All right, here are all my pieces. And um, I am going to swing them over. We'll give them a little bit of a press. I honestly don't know if I have a ton of time to press everything. We'll see. Do you see that red thread there? Luckily, it's near the edge. Okay, I'm not going to repress everything. And look, you don't have to go edge to edge again. When you trim these down, there's usually about, I'd say there's usually about an inch that gets trimmed off. This is what happens. I say, oh, I'm not gonna um, press more, but then I do, because I can't help myself. 
All right. But I'm gonna just lay these down. Maybe we'll just kind of press as we go. This looks like a big thread in there. I can see it. Do you see that? Look at that. And it doesn't, it's, it's like the same color, but I could just see something like a s squiggly. <laughs> Patrick's baby talking the dog right now. I can hear him. Okay. These I'm not going to do again. I can't wait to use the sweater material. Isn't that fun? The sweater material. That's going to be good times. Okay. Um, and then finally, these pieces here. We're going to cut these apart. I think these were pressed down pretty well. Most of these are applique pieces. I can hear my family is finally up and moving around. Everyone was exhausted. I don't think we went to bed. Uh, I think we were, we went to bed around two. Violet and I didn't get home until midnight. You know when you're a parent and it's just nice that your kids know how to drive? So she drove us home last night, which was kind of nice. Garbage. And again, these are applique pieces, so they don't have to be perfect. When you have the pieces that you're piecing, those have to be perfect. I don't even, I don't even think Kimberbell does any traditional piecing anymore for these quilts, which is a little sad because um, I actually learned how to do, how to piece from, or I mean, my first experiences with piecing were with Kimberbell quilts. Because they used to have um, quilts where you would, you know, you would do a pinwheel or something like that. All right, here we go. And this you have to be careful because you want to make sure you have it on the right side. It's pretty close in color. But with just my luck, I would have had like a piece folded in underneath. That's kind of like what happens to me. Because I'm rushing. Haste makes waste. Sure does. Look how cute these little itty bitty pieces are. They're going to be so much fun to use. If I can find them. What I'm going to do next is I am going to cut some of the batting pieces. But I don't think I have time to do them all in time for our sew along today. Um, and... And then I will go through and maybe I'll sort everything afterwards. And, you know, you're going to have a lot of room. Like, usually the applique pieces are super tiny. You're just going to have to center them if you don't go all the way edge to edge with your shape flex. So let's talk about batting pieces. 
This sheet here is from Oh So Delightful, and you're going to see that your final cut size, your batting's going to be half an inch smaller. So see how that's four and a half by four and a half? So you're going to cut four by four. So since I didn't do the prep sheet, but I will, we're just going to look at the book right now. And I'm going to start right from the beginning. Not sure how much we're going to be able to get done today. So I'm going to cut for maybe five of these. And if you look on the last page, you're going to see the final cut size is 12 and a half by six and a half. So we're going to cut our felt 12 by six. I mean, not our felt, but our batting. So let me go ahead and grab some batting. Just like my um, Shape Flex pieces, I have a ton of pieces of batting as well. Most of them are going to be smaller, so they're really good for doing like the strip borders and things like that. Um, but, you know, I do have some larger pieces in here that might work as well. Just in the interest of time, though, I have a big old piece of batting right here. And I'm just going to write down some measurements of some sizes. So this one right here, we're going to need a 6 by 12. I'll just write them down, and then we can cut them. The sweaters, trim blah box, 6 by 12. Piece star. You're going to make two piece stars. And the final size is going to be six and a half by six and a half. So we're going to go six by six, two of those. This block is eight by 10. Good books. Good books. Final size is going to be four by six. Golden Hour House, four by six. Chokeberry House, four by six. Pumpkin Spice House, four by six. Warm Snuggles, six by eight. So this would make sense for us to cut like some six inch strips. And you're gonna do two pieced pumpkins four by four. Oh, those are so cute. So two that are four by four. Crisp apples, six by eight. Hay rides, hay rides, six by six. And songbird, four by four. Crunchy leaves, six by eight. Fall sports, four by eight, four by eight, and then warm drinks, four by four, squirrel and acorn, six by eight. I like putting the smaller uh, measurement first. Scented candles are going to be four by eight, and then that's it. Okay. Six by 12, we have four by six, four by four, we have four by eight, we have six by six, let's cross them off. So six by 12, one, two, six by six, one, two, eight by 12, or eight by 10, I think I only have one of those. Four by six, one, two, one, two, three, four, four of those. One, two, three, four, four by fours. I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four by eights. I have one, two, one, two. And then, oh, here's another six by six. And six by eights. I have one, two, three. Okay. Oh, here's another one, four. We are good. Let's go ahead and... So now I have everything on a little tally sheet right here. What I need to cut for my batting. Might as well just make it quick and easy and just get it done. So I'm going to cut because most of these, this is six inch, six inch, six inch. 
and six inches. So those are all work with my six inches and then I can cut some eight inch strips. I buy, um, I buy my, uh, my stabilizer on the bolt. You're not going to see this because I need my bigger cutting table. So I'm going to go use my other cutting table and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I cut six inch strips, eight inch strips, and 10 inch strips, right? So now I can just cut those down. Because I have my handy dandy little sticky pad. So I need two six by 12s. Here's my... And I am just gonna go ahead and use, how about we use, we'll just use this. Cause I've got 12 inches here. And it doesn't have to be perfect again. I don't worry about it. So two six by 12s. Hopefully I did a good job measuring. And if I, you know, if it's a little bit bigger, I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? I like it sometimes to be like a quarter inch too big. Now I need um, four six by eights. Again, I could get my stripology ruler, but these are a little bit bigger. The measurement's eight. Eight. Eight by Hopefully this will be big enough. Eight. And I think there were four of those, right? Yep. Four of those. Eight. Six by six is three of those. One. Two. Three. And then finally, I needed um, four of the four by sixes. So, six by sixes. I don't like having, I don't like using really big rulers when I need to do small stuff. So one, oh wait, wait, I did my six by sixes. I have an extra now. These are the four by sixes. It's okay, cause you know you'll use it. One, two, three, four. And that was perfect. Save that for later. And we did all of our six inches. Six, 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 six. Um, the eight inches. Here are my eight inch strips. And I need one eight by 10. Eight by ten. There's my eight by ten, and I need uh, two four by eights. This is so not um, square, but I'm okay with that. So there were two four by eights, and I need four four by fours. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to cut two four by eights, and then I'll cut those down into two. I don't know why that one's so crooked on the edge. We'll square it off a little. Four by four. Well, that wasn't bad. We're done. We're done cutting our batting. Okay, you do need your, um, I'm gonna organize these now. There's my four by fours, four by eights. Here are my four by sixes, my six by sixes. I'll have one too many. My six by eights, four of those. And then my eight by, or my six by twelves. And here's your batting. Now I'm gonna need batting also for the strips. So this will come in handy for that. 
And I don't know why I cut these. These are the 10 inches because I didn't need them. I just needed the 8 inches. I'm just going to put this in my, with my batting scraps over here. Let's see how we're doing on time. Because if we're doing good on time, we can go ahead and sort some stuff. All right. So the last thing we would do would go be, be go ahead and sort everything and label. Since I'm running late, that's all I'm going to do in this prep video. I will come back and finish everything up and then maybe if I have time I'll splice it together. But I will see some of you in the sew along. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey. Hello. I'm finishing up my prep video. I know the order is a little off, and normally I'm more organized than this, but not this time. So um, here are my little folders. This is normally what I use. Some of them are these zip top ones, and then these other ones, they just like, they're these clear pouches. I like the game note ones. I bought another one, and they all look the same, but they are not all the same. So game notes are the ones I like. And since then, they've come out with other great ones. Um, but, you know, I'm happy with what I have, so I'm going to stick with it. What we did in our sew along today, so we're not, I'm sorting, this is what we're going to do. We don't need to sort for the Velveteen Pumpkin Patch or the Cozy Sweaters, which are so cute, or the Peace Star because mine are completed. I just finished the video for that. We are going to start with Autumn is my favorite color, and um, I organized this twice. We're going to organize it again. Here are my batting pieces. And first of all, let's go, and this is going to help us if we just sort everything. And believe it or not, I've done this like a couple of times now, but I moved my fabric again, so I figured, okay, let's just do it again. So they're semi-sorted, right? These are the pieces that were um, stabilized with Shape Flex. Don't confuse your coconut cream with your royal icing. I don't know if that's the exact name, the right name, but that's what I'm calling it. So first we'll just lay all of these out. And you can see I'm not perfect when I, um, when I put the Shape Flex on. I don't care because they are, they're um, applique pieces for the most part. Remember you have like the dark mustard and the lighter mustard. And the orange. And then these are the pieces that didn't have Shape Flex on them. Not really sure where these are going to go, but let's just add these. Some of these might be filler blocks. Ooh, here's a whole bunch of coconut cream. I love this. This is, I don't know if it's like stars or. And here we go. So first thing we need is we need our background piece. And it's hard to see in that picture, but it looks like we're going to be referring to this page a lot. It's called Autumn is My Favorite Color, and that's going to be the large piece of coconut cream. So let me grab that first. And it should be a 10 and a half by 12 and a half, which is this one right here. So it's not going to be in your view. I'm going to put it right over here to the right. And Autumn is My Favorite Color. I'm just going to come down here. So this one, two and a half by two and a half. That. Autumn is my favorite color, the L, two and a half by two and a half, but we need the one that has shape flex. And autumn is my favorite color, the mustard, the purple. Can you see that over there? I think you can. The dark orange. Burnt orange, we'll call it burnt orange. And, and that's it. 
And we can go, whoops, do you see that go flying? Autumn's my favorite color. Burnt orange, blue, green, purple, and the mustard. And that's it. We're gonna grab this fold, this one. I'm gonna put these in here. Oh, we need our piece of batting. It's gonna be the big one. Here's my piece of batting. I'm gonna put it on the inside of this. I'm gonna roll it over, put these on the front, pop it in here. It is so much easier. I know it's a lot of upfront work, but how nice is it to just grab each pouch and have everything there? Autumn is my favorite color. Next, autumn is my favorite color. Good books. Good books. The background is going to be, I think it's this brown. Good books. It's this one. So here we go. I think it's this eight and a half by six and a half. And then we have the books. I'm going to flip to this page because this will be easier. Good books. Here we go. And these are the skinny pieces, the like three and a half by one and a half. So I'll put it right here. Good books. Sassy. Good books two and good books six. One of those is going to be the one and a half. Ooh, right here. I have this in two spots. One and a half by two and a half. Here's, here, here's where I'm putting it. And then I also need the two by three. Two by three. This looks like two by three to me. Yep, two by three. And we need this lavender one. Good books, one and a half by three and a half. Good books, orange, one and a half by three and a half. Dark burnt orange. That doesn't look like... That looks like one and a half by, is that three? Oh yeah, it is. And I think some of these aren't measured right, but that's okay. Because the applique pieces, sometimes I get confused. Good books. Two by three and a half. And that is this color. Two by three and a half. And I think that's it. Flick. Those two books. Oh, it looks like there's a green one. The purple, the orange, the blue. What are those two books? Oh, there's uh, the green leather and the black leather. So let's just grab those pieces. Green leather and black leather. Here they are. Green and black. And here's our background piece. Sorry! The final size of this is going to be uh, four and a half by six and a half. So we need a four by six piece of batting. Here's our batting. Here's all of this. And let's get a pouch. And put it in. And this is good books. Good books to read. I love reading, although I don't have the luxury. So I can't wait to sometime, someday read again. I love reading. It's just so much fun. Here is Golden Hour. And Golden Hour is, what background is that? Golden Hour. Golden Hour background. Good books, good books. Golden Hour. So it's going to be six and a half by eight and a half. Eight 
Here we go. Six and a half by eight and a half. A four by six piece. There we go. I mean, you see how much room you have for waste. Um, we need the roof, which is four by two and a half. Four and a half by two and a half. That looks like this. Here's my roof. The house. And the house is, I can't tell if it's the uh, golden hour. It's going to be the dark mustard. This is the house. The windows. I think this is the window. Three by two. Three by two. Oh, that's three by two and a half. Three by two. There's three and there is two. Three by two window. And then the door. Let's see what the door is. Golden house door. It's gonna be this brighter color. And the door is two by two and a half. This is two and that is two and a half. And then we need some vinyl. So let's grab the vinyl. The vinyl is really easy to lose, so be careful with it. Know that it's in here, don't throw it away. And we're gonna be using this on multiple things, but this is the first thing we're gonna use it on, so I'm gonna put it in here. And there is your vinyl. I don't pre-cut the vinyl. And quite honestly, I have lots of little scrap pieces that I probably will use. I am going to put it in between because I could see myself forgetting that it's in there too. Okay. This is called Golden Hour House. Oops. Writing on myself. Next. Oh, isn't that cute? So cute. Oh, look. You're also going to need, um, you're going to need some of the, the, that reef. But we'll probably add that later. Looks like it's on all the doors. Choke Cherry House. Background fabric. Choke Cherry House. All of these are ones that I highlighted. So it's easy to find your background. Choke cherry. That's going to be again six and a half by eight and a half. It's my last piece of this. Um, the vinyl's in with the other stuff. You're going to have the house, which is three and a half by six and a half. I think that is, I think it's this three. No, that's only two and a half. Three and a half by six and a half. It is, where is that piece? I'm going to have to find it because I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Here we go. And let's grab our batting too. Here's our four by six batting. Here's our house. The window. Window is two by two. I think it's this little guy. Two by two. Door is two by three. I think it's going to be choke cherry house door is a two by three. Two by three. And then the star. And the star is two and a half by two and a half. And I think it's this lavender. Two and a half by two and a half. Yes. So pretty. Let's just make sure. Choke cherry. Yep. It's going to be this. And that's everything. This is just sitting here, why don't we use it? I wonder what choke cherry is. Like, what is that? Is that like a tree? Is it a color? Here's choke cherry house. Next. 
pumpkin house, pumpkin spice house. The background is I think I put the wrong color with one of these because that's the last six and a half by eight and a half. Do I have one more? Oh, I do. Six and a half by eight and a half. Um, the house is, let's look at this, four by four, four by four and a half. Let's get our batting two, which is going to be four and a half by four by six. The roof. Here's my roof. Here's my two windows. Windows three by two and a half. I think this is going to be, that's only two. That is two and a half and that's three. Here's my windows. Door two by two and a half. I think it's going to be this guy. Two by two and a half. Door windows, pumpkin, fabric six. That looks like, what is that? Let's see. What's the pumpkin? Choke cherry. Choke cherry door, window, House, oh, I'm not in Choke Cherry now. What am I on? Pumpkin Spice. Pumpkin Spice. Oh, that's Muse. And it is the two by two piece. Two by two. So we should have a little two by two. Here we go. Here's my pumpkin. And that's it. Here we go. Let's grab this. Pumpkin Spice House. Here we go. Next, Pumpkin Spice House. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I can do the sew along next Monday. I'm going to have to look at the calendar. Pumpkin Spice House. I was just thinking. Warm Snuggles. Here's my background fabric. Here's my orange velveteen for the chair. Oh, and we also need, need this. This is going to be my batting, my chair, and my blankie. Orange, uh, creamy white plush fabric blanket. Is this incredible? Oh my God. Look at this fun stuff that we get to use. And then flex foam. So we need a piece of flex foam. We'll just take this big piece out of here. And wash away topping. And I'll add the wash away topping later. Wait, this isn't flex foam. This is leather. Here, here's my flex foam. Do this, this, and this, and this is amazing. This is going to be so cute. And this is warm snuggles. I love all the different textures. Warm snuggles. All right, look at that. It's gonna have pom-pom trim. Where is that pom-pom trim? Do we put it on here? It looks like we're gonna add that later. Oh my goodness, the pieced pumpkin is so cute. All right, so you're gonna need fabric piece one, which looks like, what is that? Maybe the stem? And it's one and a half by one and a half. And I think it's one of these. Nope, that's two by two. You need a one and a half by one and a half. Those are the pieces that are really easy to lose. You know what I mean? 
Where am I going to find the little itty bitty one and a half by one and a half? Okay, we'll look for that later. Um, fabric two. So fabric one. Let's look at pieced pumpkin. Pieced pumpkin. Two of the one and a half by one and a half. That's these. I think I just cut them too big. Because do I also have two? Oh, no, I do have two two by twos. Oh, here they are. Here's my one and a half by one and a halfs. Okay, that's piece pumpkin. Two of those. Four of piece two and three. So fabric two. Piece pumpkin. Fabric two. I thought for sure it was going to be that. Piece pumpkin. So 16 of the two by threes in red. 16 of those. Did I cut that? I can't imagine that I didn't. Okay, let's come back to that. Pieced pumpkin. We have that, which I got. And pieced. Oh no, this is pieced star. We're looking for pieced pumpkin. Here we go. So we have piece pumpkin, piece two and three, four one and a half by one and a half, and this is coconut cream. Four one and a half by one and a half. Well, not sure where that is. We're going to look for that. Piece pumpkin, eight two by threes. Here are my two by threes. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, here are my, here are these. Piece pumpkin, and then I also need four one and a half by fives. One, two, three, four. And then I should have four one and a half by one and a halfs. So let me see where I can find those. So this so far is my piece pumpkin. <gasps> Those naughty dogs. Um, four one and a half by one and a half. Maybe I didn't cut them. I'm gonna have to look for those. Okay, pieced pumpkin. Maybe that's it. Sorry, sorry about the barking. What is that? That's your embroidery plaid. Oh my goodness, where is it? Oh, look it, here it is, and it is cute. How much fun is this? I love it. Okay, I am going to, I might not have cut them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those one and a half by one and a half pieces. I need four of them, and I will be right back. I'm back. Here are my one and, oh, look at that. Wrong color. Can you see? That's the R-O-I-C. I'll be right back. Let's try this again. Perfect. There's my one and a half by one and a half. This is going to make two blocks. So, um, so we have that. We have four of these. I feel like we need, um, Four of those. We have the eight two by threes and the one and a half by five and a half. Got it. And then we have the, um, this we're going to cut. But we're not going to do that right now. We also need the batting for this. The batting for this needs to be, because our end size is four and a half by four and a half. So we need two four inch squares of batting. And that should be good to go. We could put this in one of the itty bitties. Just going to fold this in half. And then it should fit. We'll put this like this so you can see it. Isn't that cute? So cute. We'll zip it so nothing disappears. This is called pieced pumpkin. Can't wait to do that. 
I wonder if it's all in the hoop. Looks like it's all in the hoop, which is always really fun. So there's our piece pumpkin. I have no idea what those dogs are barking at. Okay, this one is 10 and a half by eight and a half, which may or may not be that piece. I think it's this one. Here we go. 10 and a half by eight and a half, which means we need the big piece of batting. Those are all small. There's our piece of batting. And we need, it looks like we need some cork. So the apples are four and a half by two and a half, which is this one. The bucket band and base look like they're this fabric. So two of these, four and a half by one and a half. That's those. The sliced apple is, not sure if it's coconut cream or the royal one. Sliced apple. Coconut cream. Coconut cream, we need three by two and a half inches. Where's that gonna be? Okay, these are two different ones. I think somewhere there's a whole bunch of coconut cream that didn't make it over. So let me go find that before we go and get that. Um, sliced apple. We need embroidery cork for the bucket. Here's embroidery cork for the bucket. Do not use starch. So we have this, this, this. That sliced apple, the three by two and a half, is supposed to have, um, it's supposed to have a, whatchamacallit on, Shape Flex. So, looks like I'm going to go in search of, but I bet it's going to be here. I'm going to find that one later. I'm going to put this to the side. We're going to look for that. Fusible vinyl goes onto the apples. Let's see where my fusible vinyl is. We need to add that. I'm going to put that on here. That we need to add fusible vinyl. Let me put that on here. And that I need to find that other piece. Crisp apple, add fusible vinyl, and I need to find that piece of coconut cream. Three times 2.5 COCR. I will know what that means. Okay, crisp apples. Let's put that to the side. Hey, ride. Oh my goodness, Hayride, you are so cute. This, I'm guessing, is my fabric for the Hayride. And I'm guessing I need a six by six piece of batting. My tires, my tires are these two. These are my two tires. And my truck is six by five and a half. Here's my truck. My truck window. Three and a half by two. Truck window. Hay base. Fabric. Four by two. That looks like. Let's look at what the hay is. Hay rides. That's going to be regular muse. And that is four by two. I think this is four by two. Yep. Four by two. And we also need a piece that is four by seven without shape flex. Did you see that that one shouldn't have it? Cause I think we're gonna shred it. And then we need clear vinyl, wash away tapping, and we are good. We'll just put it in here. I didn't think, I don't think I was missing anything. Let's just call this hay rides. Okay. That's so cute. So cute. Let's 
songbird. Here is, here's my fabric for songbirds. This is going to be four by four. So we need a little, little one of these. And then the fabric for the bird, we need orange spice for the wings. Where's that orange spice? Okay, we have to go in search of the orange spice. I know I cut it. I don't know if I stabilized it. Okay, so we have to find our orange spice. And then for the bird. Bird. Oh, here it is. This is my coconut cream for, um, it's my three by two and a half for this. Isn't that horrible? It was in the pages. Okay, so we found that. It's a lot of stuff. Things are bound to get lost. The bird. Songbird. It's Muse. And he is four by two and a half. Is that? Nope. That's three and a half by, by three. Three by three and a half. We need four. We need four by three and a half. Four by three and a half. Okay, we gotta find that. Um, we need flexi foam and the orange spice wing. So let's get my flexi foam. We have to find the orange spice wing somewhere. We're going to put this with this, 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 we need the bird, we need the bird, and we need the orange spice wing. I'm going to leave this one out because that's a couple of things that we need to find for this. Songbird. I honestly don't remember cutting the orange spice wing. So I'm gonna put that one right here. And we are looking for, what are we looking for now? Crunchy leaves. Crunchy leaves. Looks like this for my background. 10 and a half by eight and a half. And we have a lot of different fabric for this. So we have fabric two. I'm gonna to turn to this page now. For crunchy leaves. Okay. Crunchy leaves. So we have the green and we need three and a half by three and two by one and a half. So three and a half by three and two by one and a half. That's definitely crunchy leaves. Crunchy leaf three. Um, this is our leaf five, three by three and a half right here. Crunchy leaf. We should have a three by three and a one and a half by, there's a three by three and a one and a half little itty bitty. And we need the orange two and a half by two and a half by three and a half. That looks like this. Two and a half, there we go, by, whoops, that's two and a half by three. Two and a half by, maybe we need this one. Two and a half by three and a half, that's it. And crunchy leaf one, three by three, that's this. That might be it. Did I forget anything? So we should have one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven pieces of fabric. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we need camel brown leather and mylar. 
Here's my camel brown leather, and here's my mylar. This is called Crunchy Leaves. It's kind of funny. I grew up in New England with a lot of crunchy, crunchy leaves. All right. What's next? Fall sports. I'm going to use this. And this. Is that right? I don't think that's right. What do we have here? That feels like 4 by 8 So we need a 4 by 8 piece. How does it go? Here we go. 4 by 8 And then charcoal embroidery felt. I need some more sleeves. Fall sports. Warm drink. Looks like this. Four by four, and the mug is three by two and a half. That looks like this guy. The saucer is three and a half by two, and that's it. Warm drinks. Squirrel and acorns. Here's this. Oh my goodness. Here's my background, which is so cute. But you know what's cute. Look at their tummies. The tummies are six by three, so it's going to be this and of just the background fabric. So it didn't say to do it on this. And then chestnut plush fabric, which is this right here. Oh my God. You're also going to need the um, flexi foam, which we'll take from the other. We'll take from the other kits once it's ready for us. And this is squirrels and acorns. Scented candles. Oh, love it. Okay, here's my long piece. And then we have the four by eight. And then we need the jars. So our jars, uh, candle number one is two and a half by three and a half. I think that's this. Two and a half by two and a half by three. So here's candle number one. Candle number two looks like two and a half by two and a half. Candle number three, two and a half by two and a half. Clear vinyl. That's going to be in our other stuff. And that's it. Instructions below are for use with scratch and sniff sticker labels. Oh my God, 
like, where are my sticker labels? I'm gonna find those. Scented candles. Here we go. And that's it. Now we gotta find our filler blocks. So here are our filler blocks. I don't know where the white leather went. We're gonna have to figure that out too. White leather, let's look it up before we go any further. Here's your page that has all the embellishment. White leather, cream embroidery leather, signs. Section one, two, three, and four. What are the signs? And when do I stitch those? Sections one, two, three, and four, I bet. I bet those are all the signs. So let's go ahead and put together the filler blocks. So we have number one. Here we go. This is a filler block, um, two by four. So that's a filler block. Number two, this looks like a filler block right here. One, two, three, four. Four is, we've got to stitch these together. So this, 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 and this. Here's one, or this is number four that has to be stitched together. And then five, this, 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 and the orange. Okay, that's five. I'll just do it like that. And six, there's filler block six, filler block seven, where's eight? Filler block eight and nine. Okay, here are my filler blocks. And I did not cut the batting for this. So we're going to have to cut batting for these. Let me put that in a different pouch since we're going to have to add batting. So I'm going to put a little note on here that says add batting. Add batting. B A T T I N G. Okay. Um. So we'll piece those together. I have extra pieces, so let me figure out where these go. So. Sewing it together, piecing it. Here's the embellishments. So here's my signs. So cream embroidery leather. And let's put this in there too, because we're gonna need this. And I just don't want anything to get lost. So we're going to add in here. Here's all the other little goodies. These adorable little things. And I'll put this here as well. Here's my little embellishments. And 
I have all of these extra pieces, so I'm going to see if I can find where they go. So this piece right here is 2 inches by 4 inches. 2 by 4. Hey, Ride. Maybe I should have two of something. Maybe two by four and a half. Songbird. This is my songbird. Two and a half by four and a half. Um, and the hayride. So the hayride was two by four. So maybe I swapped those. Oh, I did. This is songbird. And this one is hayride. Okay, songbird is in there. What is this? This big old piece is four inches by six and a half. Four by six and a half. Four by six and a half. This is the scented candle jars. Scented candle. And these are the jars. I missed that. Here's my scented candles. Oh, it goes over all of them. All right, so here's my scented candle jars. And then I have one more coconut cream. And this is a little itty bitty. It's two by two and a half two by two and a half scented candles label one looks like it goes in here too I'll just put it in there and this one here is two by two and a half that's scented candles too i'm gonna put this in here as well all right. It's hard to know which side is the right side. And I think we, oh, what's this? This little itty bitty here. Oh, this is scented candles as well. So these were all little labels that needed to be in here. Songbird, I was missing the clear vinyl, like the iron-on vinyl. Here it is. So this is the iron-on vinyl for the Songbird. And Songbird should be good to go. And we are done and sorted. I don't have the inner borders or the outer borders cut yet. We'll worry about that later. But for the most part, we have everything else. So we will be ready. The last thing I need to do is we are going to, um, I'm going to do the spreadsheet. And we do also have to add the batting. So I have to add the batting for the filler blocks. And that's kind of it. All right. We should be ready to go for next week. Next week, which time also needs to be determined because I forgot Patrick and I will be out of town again next week. So let me go ahead and put this here. And so I will let you know when we will be getting together. Thanks so much. Bye.